All right, folks. Today we're going to be talking about more about the police oral board. And today we're going to be talking about questions that come up in the police oral board and about education and about background information and people's experience in life. And then we're going to take some comments and questions afterward. So a question that comes up a whole bunch in the police oral board is always, how do you think your education is going to help you in law enforcement? And another one that comes up is, how do you think your uh, your work background is going to help you in law enforcement? So both of them, the answers have a lot of the same issues together with them, things that you have to think about when you go to answer the question. And it's going to help you to, in advance, make plans about how you could tie the things that you've done in your life in with the oral board at a police oral interview if you're going to look for a job as a cop. So I'll give you a simple example. Uh, there are some things that you've done in life that you get certificates for that you have uh, you have training in or experience in or you've done for work that don't seem like they'd be applicable to law enforcement, but in actuality, if you think about it a little bit, you can tie them right in no problem. So have these set up in advance. As an example, I trained a guy a while back and he was a welder, right? And in his interview, I was talking to him about how, you know, I, I had to like tie truck driving in, in my interview. And he said, well, in my interview, they asked me, you know, how does your education and background, do you, how do you think your education and background, it would make you a better cop, give you experience in law enforcement, be applicable. And he said, well, I was a welder. So I'm really used to working in a stressful environment with dangerous equipment with very little oversight, with very little supervision, and being able to work on my own. And I also have to be able to work off of plans that other people have given me, follow very, very strict policies and procedures, and, how did he put it, and uh, meet very strict specifications when I'm welding things together to make a product for a customer for my last business. So, you have to be able to tie this stuff in. Like when I was a truck driver, before I was a cop, when I went to the oral board interview, they said, well, how does your background and your experience, how do you think that's going to help you be a police officer? Well, I was like, well, I was a truck driver. I had to drive all day. I'm very used to long, long trips, being behind the wheel all day without being stressed out about other people in traffic, keeping my cool in traffic, making split second decisions, having to plan in, a, in advance when I'm working, what I'm gonna do next. And I had to take care of all of the paperwork for everything. Everything that came on the truck had a piece of paperwork in triplicate. So I had to make sure the paperwork was filled out right, that the product was on the truck, that it weighed the right thing. And then I had to take off the triplicate, triplicate forms just like a cop would have to do with all of their paperwork. And this form has to go into this office and that form has to go into the corporate office and this form has to go to the customer and I have to retain this form for my records. And then at the end of the day, I have to take all of these papers and separate them all out and put them in the right places, right? So you have to be able to tie this stuff in. A lot of people that are going into law enforcement, they go and get quasi-law enforcement jobs. They work for code enforcement, or they work in a booking facility, or they'll work security. A lot of people talk about working security, and they say, well, I can tie it into police work. When you go for a police oral board, they're going to have heard from hundreds of people in the past about how their security experience or their experience working at a local lockup is going to be applicable to law enforcement. But when you can tie in truck driving or being the manager of a Walmart or being a welder or being a mechanic or being a carpenter in, the advantage you're giving yourself is you're going to stand out. They're not going to re remember the 30 people that said that they were an armed security guard at you know the Tootsie Roll factory. They're going to remember the one guy that talked about how he was a welder and how his experience would transfer over into law enforcement. And that's how you give yourself the advantage with it. The same thing with education stuff, right? You could you could match almost any bachelor's degree program to the needs of law enforcement if you think about it a little bit. All right, so we're going to go back and uh, answer a few comments. I know it's only four minutes and 30 seconds in, but hopefully that gives people an idea of the type of questions that are going to come up in a police oral board. There's a playlist that I'm creating. I've got one video in it already police oral board, like talking about passing the police oral board, go back and look at it if you're new to free field training just with this video. Uh, and in the future, stuff we've got coming up, I've got a new flashlight that came in, uh, the Through Night T1 
TC20. I just got it yesterday. I'm going to be playing with it at work tonight. Uh, we've got the patches in. The link's already down in the description. And I've got two videos that I just shot yesterday and froze my butt off of my garage trying to shoot them. And that is uh, my duty bag, an update on my duty bag and how the 911 gear bag has been working over a little over a year doing it, uh, using that at work. And oh, I can't remember what the other one was. I just did it. It was just yesterday. Oh, cold weather gear for law enforcement. It's a rather long video that maybe a lot of people won't be interested in. I'm sure it's not going to have a lot of popular support like it's it's not going to go nuts and get half a million views on youtube but for people who are just getting on the job that are thinking about oh man it's snowing it's pretty cold out what's some stuff that i can do to keep myself warm i think it's going to give a lot of people a lot of ideas all right so oh also we're uh we're thinking about getting into podcasting here a little bit thinking about it trying to i think i'm going to start dual recording um with a better microphone for when we do live streams so that we can take this stuff and transfer it into podcasting. I'm hoping that that will um, not just diversify the market and diversify where free field training is going, but also allow me to talk about things maybe on the podcasting that YouTube would have a problem with. Not that they're going to be super controversial, weird things, but there's stuff that YouTube just doesn't want me talking about and Instagram doesn't want me talking about because it's their platform where if it's my platform and me talking and no one else responsible for it, I can talk about it and bring you guys hopefully better, more applicable content. All right, so let's go up to the top. All right, Leo Vid says first, <laughs> Zachary says second, Mitch says so hi, how long y'all been waiting? I am sorry, I started this live stream while I was at the grocery store picking up more coffee and getting myself something to drink here so I could do the live stream, and I forgot that it notifies everybody when I start making the live stream and not when I go live. But thank you all for coming out and uh, checking it out. We've already got 80 people watching, which is nice. Jeremy Biggs says, I just got word that I have moved on after my oral board interview. Thanks for the great advice. You are welcome. I'm glad that uh, the stuff on the channel here has helped. And good luck on your journey. Hopefully, uh, you'll make it through the next process, too. Study for the drug test. Zachary Smith says, have you ever stolen? Who in their life has never stolen anything? Private Doggo says, daddy. I'm not your daddy. I got enough kids. <laughs> Christian Tapia says, first live stream on the channel. Oh, I'm glad you could join us, Christian. We've got a whole lot of other ones. You can watch them. You watch through all of them. I keep all of them. I don't throw them away when uh, they're on YouTube. Unless YouTube deletes them, which has happened. NF Lyrics, could you answer something about bounty hunting for me? Probably not. But now you're lost in the stream because you're like, that was 10 minutes ago you commented that. We don't have bounty hunters here in Illinois. So there's not a lot of things I can say about them. I watch some of the bounty hunting videos on YouTube, and it's weird to me some of the equipment and tactics that they use. Some of their tactics are like really, really good. You hear them talking to people, trying to talk people out, thinking on their feet. And then I see some of the equipment they're using. I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, Jaden says, I just want to let you know I'm doing police ride-alongs on my birthday. For my birthday, I'll be turning 18. Oh, congrats. Have fun. Vastly says, hello from Atlanta. Hello from Illinois. I was in Atlanta this summer. Very hot and humid in Atlanta. Greetings from... Uh, High Speed Low Drag says, Greetings from frozen Texas. Greetings from very frozen Illinois. NF Lyric says, Do you get a police car when you start as a bounty hunter? I have no idea. Bounty hunters, I'm pretty sure, just use whatever cars they own. That's a private business. Vastly says, not a Leo and never will be, but I enjoy your vids. I'm glad you're watching, man. Stop on by, hit thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends, share the videos, all that stuff. El Zeki says, greetings from the United Kingdom. Greetings from the U.S. Marlon White says, were you in the military? No, I was never in the military. Texan 2V says, currently in college, the oral board is the only thing that is stressing me out about the process. This is a life straving stream. Thanks, brother. You are very welcome. We're trying to take some of the mystery out of it because I think a lot of stress that people have about the police hiring process is just the mystery of it. Like they don't know what to expect and how it works. Scout says hello again from Quantico, Virginia. Hello from Illinois. 
Roy says, just passed my written exam and Pat, what do you recommend, civil service department or non-civil service? I don't know what you're talking about. You mean a government entity or a non-government entity? Whatever works best for you. Any job that pays the bills is a good job. And there's no shame in any of them. I've said before, if if I got offered a job tomorrow, paid $125,000 a year to sweep the floors, I'd be sweeping floors. And this channel would be Tommy's Floor Sweeping Channel. And we'd be talking about the best way to sweep floors. Adam says, what is your strategy for when they ask a question and you have no idea what to say? Well, that's the goal of this is to get you to where you're going to know a lot of the stuff they're going to say and you don't get tongue-tied like that. You could just say, I don't know, I never thought about that before. That buys you four seconds to think up something, right? Christian says, as a sociology major, I stated in my interview that I learned about community policing in my class and the importance of gaining public trust and respect. Oh, the, so, the fuzzy sciences, huh? Here's the thing. Community policing is not a, a division. It's an activity, right? If you're doing your job right, you are the community policing. If you're doing your job right, if everybody's doing their job right, if everyone's held to the higher standard that you should be held to, then community policing takes care of itself because the community sees what's going on. Of course, you also have to have the help of your administration who backs you up and explains to the public when weird things happen, what happened and why. George says, I have a question. Can you become a security guard with a green card? I don't see why that would be a problem in most states. Al Zicky says, can you go over your oral board experiences? That's what we're doing. Mike Wilkerson says, in your travels, what gotcha questions have been offered in the oral board, either because they were perceived, either because they are or because they were perceived by the new, newly minted officer? Gotcha questions? I haven't really run across too many of them. I have heard of agencies that will ask questions to see if you will lie. The last, like, would you write your mother a ticket? And that goes back to the whole, if you figure out that what's going on is they're asking you questions to get you, do you want to work for a place that's doing that? That's, that's a big boy question for people, right? If you go to a place and in the interview they're playing games... Is that a place you want to work? What are they going to do later down the road when something sketchy happens? Are they going to toss you under the bus? What happens when there's a disciplinary problem? Are they going to play games? Is that a place you want to work? That's not really a place I want to work. Uh, Moco says, if you have time, can you explain the requirements to be a canine officer? That's different in every agency. That's different in every agency. I would love to have a canine officer on who could talk about their experiences with canine. I was never a canine officer. Uh, it was offered to me many years ago, but alas, my wife is allergic to dogs. <laughs> and German Shepherd would throw her into fits. Like, my dog is a Beagle-Rottweiler mix, and for whatever reason, she's pretty hypoallergenic, probably the Beagle in her, but we, we took her to hang out with one of the canines at work one time, and she, like, her eyes went red and started snotting, and I was like, that's not sexy. <laughs> We're not doing canine. Uh, XXX88XXX says, Is military service something generic as security gigs when applying to Leo jobs, or are they more valued? It depends on the agency. Some places don't care. And I'll be uh, brutally honest with you. Some places don't care that you have prior military experience. Some places prefer prior military experience, and other places actually restrict everyone out of the process that doesn't have prior military experience, right? Here in Cook County, Illinois, a few years ago, the Cook County Sheriff's Department, so the people that run uh, courts and corrections, basically, was is their entry-level jobs, they were hiring nothing but military veterans. They told you right at the start, you're not a military veteran, don't even bother applying, everyone we take for the next three years is going to be a military veteran. In other places, don't care. They don't take it as um, education. They don't take it really as uh, anything other than like job experience, that you have four years of job experience. 
and everything in between. I think it'll probably give you a better idea of what you're getting into, having worked for the government before, and on the oral board, having military service will probably help you in knowing how to talk to people who are in authority and knowing if they're playing those games that we were talking about earlier. Because if they're talking about, if they're playing games, you probably don't want to work there. Gerardo Aguilar says, love your videos, man. One question that caught me off guard was, tell us a time when your integrity was in question. That's borderlining on playing a game. They're trying to find out what type of a game player you are to see if you've been mixed up in something where later on down the road uh, it turned out that it wasn't you or you managed to skirt the charges, right? And someone who's a game player is going to have 20 of those stories and they're going to have a real interesting explanation for it, right? My simple answer for, for those types of things is like, well, there was one time when I was working, you know, I turned the paperwork in and the clerk said, you know, the secretary said that she never got the paperwork. So I had to go back and dig through her piles of stuff and do her job and find the paperwork to prove to the boss I actually turned the paperwork in. Simple enough. John O says would love a podcast. Well, we're working on it. Long-term plans. I'm always looking to expand where the channel is going. That's why we started the Instagram. The Instagram hasn't really taken off as well as I would want to. The Facebook, which is just kind of like a magnet for negative comments. And, uh, you know, those haven't really exploded because it's it's my ability to talk to you guys that seems to draw a lot of people in and interact with people. So a podcast kind of seems like a natural way to go to expand that audience scope and expand the, the things that I can do. Uh, high speed low drag says full length videos that have teeth are what I look for. I'm glad you like them. Please give me video ideas. Email me or leave a comment on here or leave a comment on the Instagram or the Facebook or something. Give me video ideas. All of my video ideas currently are coming from people that watch. They're coming from viewers. Stefan says I listen to your videos as podcast on my way to work. So stoked for this. I'm glad you like them. That's part of the reason why we're kind of getting into this idea, because a lot of people have told me that same thing. Christian says, also, uh, also I said that I was strong-armed in the city I am applying for and do not want anyone else to feel helpless and view the city as my second home, which the board loved. Some boards will love that, some won't. Some are looking for someone that's like, oh, rah, 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 police work, and some of them are looking more for people that are looking for a good job. I think most of them are looking for people that are looking for a good job. At least you thought to say something more than, I want to serve my community, which makes you look like a doofus. Peter says, awesome video. Having security experience at a psych hospital, I try to stay away from the stereotypical responses, but when asked how it translates, from the stereotypical responses when asked how it translates into law enforcement. Well, in that specific case, you could talk about more of the psychological, the psych side, having to deal with psych patients which is a hot-button issue in law enforcement right now. It would probably help a whole lot more than talking about your experience in security sitting at a desk, right? Because let's be honest, the majority of what a cop does on the street is turn in circles in a black and white, and the majority of what a security guard does is sitting at a desk or standing at a post, most of the time, right? Occasionally, you get them where you're driving around, but even then, you're not driving much, you're not driving far, you're not driving fast, you're not doing a lot of the things that police do. These are very separate jobs, right? But when you can connect them like that, especially about dealing with psych patients, that's a big deal. Or if you work at a facility, you know, a, a, a nuclear plant or a chemical plant or something like that, where you can talk about, well, I had to, I had to be aware of the things that were going on in the plant and work in this, this higher risk environment, physically risky environment, that's a great thing to bring up too. That's how you make that security background make a whole lot more sense to a police oral board than just, well, I was a security guard and I had to fill out a form every day that said what bathrooms I checked. That doesn't play very well. Mike Wilkerson says, this audio quality is actually going to work dandily, me thinks. More on that as we go. That's See, the problem with this with my phone, the audio quality on the phone isn't bad because I'm speaking directly at the microphone, but it's the connection that drives me nuts. I have to like drive around and find a spot with good connection before I can do these. This is a pretty good spot so far. 
555 eggnog says how would you answer what would you do if pulled if you pulled over a drunk driver and it was the chief see that's a scenario question and we're going to go into scenario questions in an upcoming live stream Kyle F says, I'm 16 and I'm thinking about com computer science as a college major. I was also going to do it with a criminal justice major, double major, your thoughts. I don't think double majoring in computer forensics and criminal justice is going to do you more than anything else. Uh, one, anything with forensics in it isn't a real major. And especially computer related stuff, within a year it starts getting out of date, and in three years, it's completely out of date. And it can take you longer than two or three years to get a job as a cop when you graduate from college. That's the realities of it. If you want to be a police officer, it's never a bad idea to minor in criminal justice because it's something you're going to be interested in. It's going to keep you involved and engaged in college. But any college classes, I shouldn't say classes, but any college majors that say forensics in them are probably BS. That's the reality of it. Um, forensic science majors, um, forensic pathology majors, unless you're talking a master's or a doctorate program, those aren't, those aren't real degrees that have real jobs attached to them. If you were minoring or majoring in criminal justice and you were minoring or majoring in computer science, that would make sense. But you're not going to learn anything in computer forensics that you wouldn't learn in computer science. That's computer forensics is a major that is designed by a college to sell a product. You have to realize when you go to college, you are buying a product. The college is selling you a product. How many people are computer forensic science technicians in the country? Find the number. I guarantee you it's going to be a three digit, maybe low four digit number. And then look around and see how many people are in the class with you. For computer forensics. The college would not offer it if there weren't a whole bunch of people involved with it and there's no jobs for it. It's, a jobs that, it's essentially jobs that don't exist. And the people that are getting those jobs are not taking computer forensics in college. Logan says, I have an interview on the 25th before my oral board. I have an interview with the chief. Any suggestions? Dress nice. Shower. Use soap. Uh, bring a pen and a pad of paper. When you sit down, shake dude or whoever's hand, put the pad of paper down and the pen or put the pad of paper in the pen in your lap. And as he's taking notes about you, if you come up with, if something happens that you need to take a note on, you take notes too. It makes you look like you're prepared and you took it seriously. And whether, I can't see from your picture, whether you're a dude or a chick, wear a suit. Go buy a suit, wear a suit to the interview. It's vitally important. Don't come in dressed kind of nice. You have an interview with the chief, wear a suit. Stefan says, glad you're feeling better. I missed the beginning. Sorry about that. I am feeling better, though. I'm just getting over strep throat, I think. I have an appointment with my doctor tomorrow, actually, because I got this cough <coughs> <coughs> that, like, hurts my lungs. It's not pleasant. Vasily says, yes to podcasts. I fly to work. And I'm always looking for good spoken word entertainment. Glad you like it. I try to do most of these live streams so you can just listen to them where there aren't a lot of visual aids. That and I'm too lazy to come up with visual aids. XXX88XXX uh, says, were you in the store with that jacket? Yeah, I was in the store with this jacket. This is, uh, let me look that. I normally keep my department patch on here, but... It folds right up. This is the same jacket I wear all the time. And then if something happens, boop, boop, instant ID. That's one thing that I, I actually live in my life is that the whole idea that you, you need to have instant identification if you're a cop to keep blue on blue shootings down. And so, you know, like your presence is more of a use of useful use of force all the time than all the weapons that you have on you, your ability to talk. So if I can just pop out police and the department star and I have the free field training patch on my shoulder it to most people that looks uniformish enough they're going to listen to you uh, scout 3058 says also do you patch trade email me 
Mike Olkerson says, I saw a police officer with full sleeve tattoos recently. What's the policy in your area department currently? And where's your tribal homie? I don't have any tattoos. Tattoos are not my thing. I know a lot of people who are really into tattoos. They're not my thing. They don't excite me. I don't have any tattoos. But my department where I'm at, we have people with full sleeves. We've got a guy with tattoos on their, people with tattoos on their hands, tattoos on their fingers. Uh, we've got a couple of girls that work for us that have got tattoos up their necks, stars like up their necks and stuff. So we can have pretty much anything we would want. The policy, I think, says it just can't be a racist, basically. But if you have racist tattoos, why are you a cop anyway? You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's kind of where it's at with it. Uh, tattoo policies aren't a big thing here in the Midwest, at least down in the south suburbs of Chicago where I'm at. But uh, I know they are a thing in other places. They make people cover up and stuff. But I don't have any tattoos, so it's not my thing. Uh, Mustang Krillin says, finally caught alive. Ha, ha, ha. Any thoughts on voice stress analysis versus polygraph? Polygraphs aren't real. Neither is voice stress analysis. They're, they're a stress test. So if you're not stressed about what you're saying, you're going to pass. That's it. That's the whole, that's the whole deal. Google them, and you'll realize that there's nothing to be stressed about. Daniel Ellison says, What advice would you give to applicants who have never worked in security or law enforcement when they're confronted with scenario questions? Well, the people that are on the police oral board aren't all cops, and they're not expecting you to be a cop. Now, obviously, if you've, if you've got law enforcement experience, you're going to be able to answer the questions in a more articulate manner because there's situations that you may have been put in before. But all they're looking for is for you to be a sane, reasonable person. So answer them honestly. We're going to do more on that in the future. Maybe the next one we'll do, I'll, I'll write up some scenario questions. In fact, put the scenario questions that you want covered that you've maybe seen or heard of before in the comments section so I've got some material for the next live stream. Uh, D. McGowan says, do you get to choose your patrol vehicle? No, I don't get to choose it. I don't even get to take it home. I don't get to use it for videos, but it is nice. <laughs> I have an all-wheel drive Ford Explorer, brand new, 20, well, not anymore, brand new, but 2017, I got it when it was brand new, but I don't get to decide that. I complained at my boss about the Taurus until he gave me the Explorer, so I guess there's that, but today I could come into work and be like, we don't like you, you're in a Crown Vic, and I'd be back in a Crown Vic. Adam says, going to get my power card from JJC soon. That will help you in Illinois, getting the power test card. A lot of places don't even want to give the power test for liability reasons. They want you to just show up with the card. So good. That's a step toward the right way. Uh, Jaden says, I got on your computer. Is it illegal? A computer mounted inside a car, civilian car. It, in Illinois, it kind of is. Any screen you can see from the driver's seat is illegal in Illinois. Any any screen. So a lot of the stock screens in cars technically aren't legal in Illinois, but putting a laptop up front definitely isn't. I know some utilities get away with it and security companies, they put uh, laptops in the front seat of the car. Realistically, you don't have any use for it up here. Like, what are you going to do? you going to play solitaire on it? Half the time, I wish my squad car didn't have a computer. VRP says, just got a new car. Hey, congrats. Stefan says, can you talk about HR 218? I think that's the law that allows cops to carry off duty in all states. Are there limitations? What does it go into effect for an officer after being sworn on probation? Well, HR 218 is a federal law that basically is an affirmative defense for a full-time police officer or a qualified retired police officer who um, carried or carries a weapon in the course of their official duties um, against state and local laws, right? So a police officer can still be arrested. Like if I went to, let's say, New York City, right? And I got my, you know, my Glock 27 and my little Harry's Holsters contender here, right? And I got that tucked in my waistband. And the New York City police, for whatever reason, decided they wanted to arrest me. Let's say some incident happened right? And I blast a dude on vacation in New York City. Nightmare, by the way. But let's say that happened, right? They could arrest me for having the gun, but when it went to court, it would be an affirmative defense against that arrest. So the court would be pretty much forced by federal law to throw it out. It doesn't keep me from being arrested. It's an affirmative defense. 
And that's why it's it's concealed carry for officers, right? And it puts the onerous on me to not, you know, mess up and to carry concealed and to be a good ambassador for my department and my state and my agency when I'm on vacation out of state or I'm transporting, you know, I'm, I'm out of state and I'm carrying, which I should be anyway. But it doesn't, it doesn't allow me to carry is an affirmative defense against local uh, state and local laws and ordinances that restrict my ability to carry. It's never been an issue. <laughs> the department can still restrict things, though. Because HR 218 is in effect, doesn't mean I can take a high point and put it in a sock and go carry it, you know, in Washington, D.C. That doesn't mean that. The department can still say, hey, hey, you weren't supposed to be carrying that at all. And I can still get reprimands from my agency if I go outside the department policy. It's not what people... HR 218 isn't exactly what people think it is. It does a lot, but it isn't, it isn't, it isn't a right. It's an affirmative defense. Mike Wilkerson says, ride-alongs, interesting. Does your department offer ride-alongs, and what is the protocol to arrange that in general? Currently, my department has a policy on ride-alongs, but we don't take ride-alongs unless they're uh, employees of the department or police explorers. So the only ride-alongs I've had have been dispatchers and police explorers. I recently had a police explorer on a ride-along, and um, she told me I was the only real cop that she had been on a ride along with because apparently they had her riding with like people from community policing stuff and they're like yeah i rode along with this person that person but you're like the the first real cop cop that i've rode with like you were just pointing a gun at someone and i was like welcome to real police work it was fun we had a good time red van says greeting from frozen canada greetings from illinois Gordon says, how much of that 5 o'clock shadow does your department allow? Are you rebelling against the new no beard policy? No, I've just been off the last couple of days. I've been in my garage making videos, and it's 1.24 now. I'm going to have to go home and get ready for work in like 10 minutes. So this stream's going to be over shortly. And I'm going to have to shave before I want to work. I rocked the boat enough without rocking the boat about the beard thing, right? Like, I told him what I thought about it, and that's it. I'm not, I'm not going to... I'm not rebelling. Black Dolphin says, do you play <laughs> Bad Boys Cops theme when on patrol? No. No, I don't. I actually listen to a lot of gangster rap. <laughs> I run out of things to listen to. I've been I've been driving for a living for over 20 years. You can only do on the on the radio. Uh five 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 the department. just to get to and from work or for their daily activities. It depends on the department. Mustang Krilla says, my God, man, where's the coffee cup? I actually forgot it. So I stopped and got this uh, this Starbucks Frappuccino. Need a little caffeine in my system. Jessica Wilkinson says, I'm wanting to get in the academy. What are some advice on PT and things we will learn? I have an associate's in criminal justice. I've got an entire playlist of stuff about the academy and education requirements and physical requirements and stuff like that. Check out the channel. It's all on there. And I've got it broken down in a playlist. I forget what that playlist is called, but it's in there. It's like law enforcement requirements or something. William Steeter says, hello from Nashville, Tennessee. First time I've caught the live stream. It's nice to have you. High Speed Low Drag says, can you direct me to a video you may have for plate carriers? Uh, my plate carrier, I did a video very early on in the channel. It was one of the first videos that kind of took off. It's a little dated now. Uh, it's got my head cut out of it and everything else. But it's called uh, Plate Carrier, the Go Bag Alternative for Leos. It's on the channel very early on. It should also be under gear reviews, but it's in there. Mike Wilkerson said, is the light on your vehicle easy to manipulate or can you grab your through night and boom you've got what you want I don't know what the question is the spotlight at work works great because the car is new those go bad after a few years of using them but uh, I have my streamlight stinger when I'm at work and I can shine that out the window if I want to most of the time if I'm in the car I'm using the spotlight the spotlight's a much better flashlight than you're ever going to have from, from a handheld that doesn't have like a carry strip those spotlights especially the new LED spotlights they're, they're brutally effective they're actually, they almost throw too well. 
Justin says, I love the training on use of emergency lights and how to drive. Thanks from Utah. That's another one, pure education stuff that uh, is going to get a bunch of negative comments. People are like, why aren't you in your police car? Uh, and isn't going to have a lot of popular appeal, but it's what the core of the channel really likes. That's what the supporters really like, and so I'm going to continue doing them. I had a lot of fun doing that video, too. Sasha says, so I just did my polygraph in August and was completely honest, went to the background, and the investigators said, since I didn't pay for a dog leash that I had missed in my basket, my integrity is no good. Yeah, okay. He's just playing with you. Jason says, I always enjoy your videos, Tommy. I just became a fire investigator after being a firefighter for 14 years. Hey, congratulations. Around here, the arson investigator, fire investigator stuff is uh, its kind of weird. They actually they send them to the police academy, and then they come out and they don't get any real formal training beyond that, at least as far as I've ever seen, which kind of sucks for them. But they do get to go to a police academy, which is something kind of cool. Like If they were like, hey, you want to go to the fire academy? I'm like, no, I'm fat and short and I don't want to do that. But for guys that, that wanted to do that, that'd be a cool thing to be able to do. All right. Uh, let me take one more. Gordon Kemp, right? This is going to be the last one. My wife's calling me. I can see her on the phone here. And uh, it's almost time for me to go into work. So Gordon Kemp says, We can't get the proper coffee slurp with that Starbucks bottle. I feel cheated. That's because the live stream cut off early. Hold on, watch. I can always slurp my coffee. There you go. Kind of sounded more like me farting on the toilet. All right. So that's our live stream for today. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Please feel free to put comments down below with some questions of stuff that I didn't get to today. Uh, if you've got questions for the scenario stuff, the next live stream I want to do, scenario-based questions on the police oral board, please put them down in the comments so I have something uh, to talk about when we're on here live streaming. Uh, until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other.